Now guys, if you was working with somebody that knew how to run this truck, like my son Skyler, he knows how to load. Uh, and when we're working together, I just drag the logs up here and Skyler loads them. And it's just a constant back and forth thing. But I'm by myself today and the best way I found to load these logs by yourself is stacking them like this, like a magazine. And then you just roll them to the truck. And then when it gets too far to roll them, you just move the truck over and then keep loading. And this is the way I found to do it that works best for me. Now y'all, for some reason, my camera had a little bit of a malfunction. I did not get the actual first logs going on the truck. But anyway, here's the deal. So you want to put your smaller, longer logs on the very bottom to begin with. So that way you can load your bigger logs and they don't have as far to fall and it don't make as big of a bang if that makes any sense. Now here I'm going to take my PV and just roll that log back uh, get it up against the standard. And you'll have to do that from time to time to get things exactly where you want it. side which would be the right side and kind of work your way back towards you you want to build your load up on that side first got about a half a load or so on I'm putting my pegs in here uh, so I can add my loader extensions on the forks and that allow me to build my load up a little bit higher And this chain deal that I'm doing here now, y'all, this is something I come up with here a while back uh, to allow these loader forks to kind of set out sort of level with the truck, I guess you could say, uh, because it just makes getting those forks on, uh, those extensions on a whole lot easier. You know, you're not bending all the way over on the ground. Uh, and I found for me, it's just a lot easier putting them on.
Now, as you saw there, there'll be times when you'll have to take a chainsaw and clean up some of the knots uh, on the logs, some of the knots we couldn't get to whenever we was bucking the logs up in the woods. And it's best to just clean, you know, clean your logs up best you can. You want to take the mill the best product you possibly can. And it makes the logs lay better on the log truck too. Alright y'all, right quick I want to talk about uh, mill deductions. This log here has got a crook in it on the end. See how it's kind of crook? Uh, at the mill, they're going to deduct some of the footage off of this log because, you know, of course it's not straight. Sweep looks like a banana and a log of that nature would get a deduction. And the mills know percentage wise how many, you know, feet to deduct it for the percent of sweep it's got or crook. Uh, so that'll build deduction. But now also there's a different kind of deduction, which is a grade deduction. In other words, uh, you've got grade ones and twos and threes, and then you've got prime and prime plus logs. And that depends on whether it's got knots or cat faces or whatnot in the face of a log. And a log has four faces all the way around it. The lower the grade, the lower the money per foot. Now, if you've got sweep and crook, the less footage you have. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move the log truck over and you can see my PV sticking up there beside this log. I stick my PV there for a reason, y'all. I stick it there so I can have something to line that front fork up with when I back up to the log. It just kind of helps me judge where I'm at. Now on real short logs like eights and nines, you can kind of just look out the window and split the difference with the loader forks. But on the longer logs, it gets a little more challenging on how far you need to back up or whatnot. So I just stick my PV uh on the log where i think the uh loader fork needs to go and i back up to it
when you're skidding your logs up here on the landing with the mules, it's important that you get the logs all lined up with each other. Here is a prime example of me not getting it lined up like it was supposed to be exactly. And I'm gonna have to pull a truck up. But if you'll keep all your logs pretty well even, you won't have to do a whole lot of moving the truck around. If you just kind of skid them up there willy nilly, you're gonna be moving the truck a lot and it's gonna be, uh, you know, not very productive. And notice also where my PV's at too. And I'm just gonna line that front fork up with that PV. That's a lifesaver there when you're by yourself. Now something else I haven't really ever mentioned that I need to make sure I do mention, if you're going to run one of these side loader trucks, when you get in and out of it, you need to make sure that driver's door is closed. Because if in the event that you had to run or get away from this side loader, when you're loading the log, if that door is open, it's gonna clothesline you when you turn around to run. So you need to make sure that door is closed and you have a good exit plan to get away if something does happen. We don't anticipate that, but you need to be ready for it if you're in that scenario. That's all the logs I've got cut. Uh, I'm gonna get my chain back out to take my extensions off and here I'm gonna walk around to the back of the truck and check my load to make sure we've got that covered wagon appearance. Now if any of you want any exclusive details on this truck, as far as my loader forks and the chain on how I've got that hooked and all that good stuff. Uh, go back and look back here a few days ago with the video we made entitled uh, Side Loader Truck. I'll put a link to it in the description below and that'll pretty much tell you about anything you want to know and give you some close-ups of how all this stuff works on this truck.
now I'm gonna bind this load down. I've got it like I want it, I think. Probably could have stood a couple more logs. But that's all I got cut for now. This little old area that we're at right here is thin. And there ain't much right here, so we're just gonna take this load and be happy with that. But I wanna show y'all how I bind this load down because again, we've got dumps, trip stands on the other side. We do not want those trip stands tripping going down the road. So I'm gonna show y'all how to bind this thing to where the trip stands can't fall. Now, DOT regulations state, in Tennessee anyway, uh, if you're binding straight down, in other words, you're not going at an angle forward or back, that you've got to cover one sixth of your working load. I've got somewhere around 1,200 feet on this now, which is probably 13,000 pounds. So you divide 13,000 by six, and that's what these chains has got to carry, the weight. I've got two 5 16 grade 70 binder chains and grade uh, and 5 16 binders. I believe they're rated for 4,500, I believe, if that was right. And I'm going to have two chains on there, so it'll be 9,000 pounds. So we're way over what we need uh, for DOT. Now, the best way I found to do this, this chain is heavy. Is get you some in your hand like this right here and then get a swinging motion one two three there we go now i also I also come under that bar right there. And then, come down here and hook it in the frame right there. And then I'm gonna go to the other side and hook it on the frame. I'll be right back. Now I'm gonna show y'all how I've got it hooked here in a minute. All right, we got one down.
tired, y'all. Oh, this chain's heavy. That's pretty good. Let me get the pipe. Okay, so here's the deal. You see how that chain wraps around that loader? Goes up over the top. And this chain is from the frame up over the loader forks, over the top. Let's go around here to the other side. Now, look how that chain comes across the top and around that standard and down to the frame now that's what we want that's got them captured so now they can't fall while we're going down the road because it'll the frame will hold it all right the next step is going to be get this load to the mill and get it dumped off and i'm going to take y'all with me and show you but i wanted to show you this load <clears throat> i could have put a little bit more on it but look at the top how it makes that crown it don't have a peak sticking up in the center. It's got a crown, like a covered wagon. If you put a peak right in the middle, your chain won't hold all your logs tight. And when you get to the mill, your chains will be loose. If you load it like this right here, covered wagon, your chains will stay tight. All right, y'all, here we are at the mill. And I've got everything set up to come off, to dump the logs off. First off, we had to get the binder chains off. And then, if y'all remember in the side loading log truck video, I told y'all about the chain that had to go from here over to this one. Because whenever we dump, it's going to shoot them out and they're going to hit the ground underneath the logs and we got to be able to get them out. So that's what the chain's for. The uh, lock system is on the other side. Y'all can see that in the side loader log truck video if you really want to see it uh but it's locked right now and i'm going to go over there and unlock it set the camera up and then we're going to do a quick dump and pull the standards out from under it Now this is pretty typical of what it looks like when a dump. Most of the logs will come off, some of them will stay. What I'll do is I'll pull the truck up, finish rolling the rest of the logs off. All right, y'all, I got the truck pulled up. Now we gotta get the rest of the logs off. Set y'all right here where you can see. And the rest of it I'll have to do by Peavy. Now my camera might die before I'm done, but y'all get the idea. Once it's dumped, pull up, just keep rolling them off. And if you need more room, keep pulling up.
Now y'all, as y'all can see, this is a very, very, very dangerous part of the operation. And you want to be standing either at the very front or at the very back. You do not want to be nowhere in the middle. And when you're on the ground, you don't want to be nowhere near where those logs are coming off because it can jump up and hit you. Uh, there's just a number of things that can go wrong. And this is a uh, part of the operation where I take my time and I am very, very careful. Uh, because again, I'm here at the mill alone by myself. There's nobody here today, which is good that I've got this side loader truck because I can dump my logs off without having nobody here after hours, but there's nobody here. So if something were to go wrong, y'all, I would be in a mess. And I want you to watch this big log here as it comes over. You see how I'm up on the headache rack where I can get away from it? It did throw my PV off the truck, but I was on the headache rack where I could just step out of the way and let that log go. Now this log has got that funky butt hand on it. It's got a crook in it. So I'm going to have to get some uh, momentum going to get it off. But the main thing is watch how I move whenever it does start to come off. I back up and go towards the truck, the cab. There are times when a log that done what it did just then, it could jump up and, you know, hit you or whatnot. And it pays to know how these logs act, you know, they have done it several times. It pays to know how these logs act at certain times uh, because you need to know how to get out of the way. But look here how I'm at the very end of the truck, uh, rolling them away from me off onto the stack. So I've got the truck kind of protecting me. And then a while ago when I rolled that big log off, I was able to get up toward the cab. You, that's what you want to do in this operation. And several times, y'all, you'll have to get up on the log bed and roll those remaining logs off. And when you do, you have to be very, very, very careful. I just want to kind of sum it up to say this. A side loader truck for a mule or horse logger is a very, very good asset to have because you can load and unload without having to have any kind of equipment. And you can go to the mill after hours if you work kind of part-time like I do. Uh, it's a very good asset to have. You just got to know how to run it. And you've got to know how to be safe around it and work around it. You know, it just, there's just some things a fella needs to know. And if you know those things, you can, you can operate a side loader and get along real good with them. All right, y'all, now I'm gonna move the truck backwards uh, over there to pull the uh, standards out from under the stack, but my camera dies about the time I pull up to it. So I'm not gonna be able to show that for y'all, but there's really not much to it. Basically, you just hook the chain uh, to the front hook on the truck and then back out and pull the standards out from under it. Then you take the standards and reset them on the truck, which is no big deal. You just put the pipes back in the pipe, stand them up, reset the cables, and then lock it and store your binder chains, put everything back where it's supposed to go, and then you're good to go. Well, y'all, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank every one of you for watching and commenting and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Hope y'all have a great rest of the day.